Thank you so much, Sarah, and um, that's a beautiful acknowledgement. Um, as Sarah said, I'm Saskia, and I've been given this extraordinary honour to um, have a conversation with uh, our artist here that we're celebrating. Um, and I recognise there are many people in the room who um, perhaps are familiar, who know Mel, um, but maybe there's some people in the room who are meeting Mel for the first time. So um, I'm going to take a seat and um, I thought we might have a, a bit of a conversation. Um, but I thought I'd just um, give a little bit of background as to why we're here. I'm really excited personally to be back in the Digital Gallery, which is a dedicated space to celebrating um, local artists of all sorts of um, backgrounds. Um, and um, mediums, and it's very exciting to have Mel's work celebrated here tonight. Uh, it's been a long time since we've had a celebration in this space, so it's very, even more special. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> um, so the learning space, which is the whole space that we are visiting tonight, is proud to present the NADOC Week exhibition in Digitoba by Mel Smith. Hi, Mona. Indigitoba was born in 2022 after Mel read an article about racism online within the manga, cosplay and anime communities. Mel was inspired by the International Inktober Drawing Challenge and decided to bring awareness of black excellence within these spaces. The prompts in the Inktober Challenge gave Indigenous artists the chance to create their own characters, redrawn in their styles and to flip entire concepts on their head. The exhibition aims to give people the chance to see that Aboriginal art isn't just one thing and can be as wildly diverse as any other sector of the art community with hidden nuggets of culture lovingly left throughout each piece. So Mel is a 32-year-old mother of two. I believe the children are in the room. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and proud not all woman living on Mongol country. Mel's artwork has a strong sense of feminine power and connection to her country, as well as the country she has been raised on here in Sydney. She uses her artwork as a physical representation of her journey home. Welcome, Mel. Hey. I think that deserves a round of applause. Absolutely. Is there anything else you want to add to that uh, little intro? Uh, that's me in a nutshell, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And I will hand this mic over to you because um, I'm just doing a check. Everyone can hear okay? Yeah. 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 Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about your artistic journey and how you got started as an artist? Thank you. Um, yeah, I guess I'm one of those annoying people that have always drawn and made things. Um, and I kind of fell away from it for a little bit because I was, you know, a teenager out being social and too busy to make. But um, when Rose was born, she was great. All she did was sleep. <laughs> and I was really bored. <laughs> so I decided that I was going to teach myself to paint, which is something that I'd never done before. Um, before that, it was like black and grey realism and that was it. So I started with watercolours, which led into acrylics which uh, when Kobe was born, I got my first iPad that my husband bought me, thank you so much. <laughs> um, and it was like a game changer, like using Procreate, which is a program I used to create all of these. Um, it just does so much. And yeah, that's kind of where I got to from there, I guess. I since then have become like a jack of all trades, master of none, in that I love woodwork, despite whinging the whole way through. Um, I'm really good at ceramics even though I hate it and so I've done lino printing and I've done obviously digital work and acrylic abstract and I've taught classes and I've sort of done everything at this point. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's sort of how I got here. But like this is very much my like comfortable area and what I'm best at in my opinion anyway. Um, yeah, and it's like it's all locked up nice and safe on the iPad from little fingers. <laughs> so it's been really good with kids in the mix. Yeah. It sounds like we might have some budding artists coming up in the next generation. Pretty much this whole front row. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> That's exciting. Um, what are some of the key themes or messages that you convey through your Indigitoba? I guess 
um, not dissimilar to the rest of my work. It's very feminine. It's, but it, it's not girly. It's feminine, but they're strong women. They're not, you know, little prosy women that are just there for decoration. And so that's something that, like, I would love for my daughter to be, and I would hope that I can show her that. There is, um, <laughs> some people noticed, a lot of cats. <laughs> Um, it was like a couple weeks into, or a couple days into Indigitober when my cat that I had for 14 years passed away. So I put her in every artwork I could. And most of you know me pretty well, so you know that I now have four cats. <laughs> so I draw cats a lot. <laughs> um, but I guess with like themes and stuff, I mean my children are in my work a lot. Like obviously with Rose and Kobe are there. And Rose was my model for my Zelda one as well. And they're they're in a lot of things. Rose is my free model. <laughs> I often just like, come in, put your head this way, turn your arm that way. Okay, yeah, let me take a photo, that's my reference picture. <laughs> so yeah, there's, it's just a lot of me and like all of the things that I'm proud of for myself and my life, I guess. Yeah, fantastic. Um, that's brilliant. I mean, I'm personally a cat lover, and I, um, during COVID, well, the first lockdown, I went into um, the Cat Protection Society to find a find a cat, and two cats and you should have came home. Me. I know. <laughs> so I went there to give my kittens up, and they wouldn't take no, me. No, <laughs> because they saw you coming. But we digress. Um, uh, how does your Aboriginal heritage and culture influence your exploration of anime? Hmm. I don't know if it's specific to anime. I'm sorry, I keep looking at my work. I need to like yeah, look no, at it and think. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's specific to anime, but definitely throughout all of my work. I just... There's been like a few things that have been said to me throughout my life that have kind of like changed the way I look at myself or I look at the things that I make. And one of them was when I was at uni. I've like always known that I'm Indigenous and I've always been really proud of that but I didn't have a lot of information. And when I was at uni, I said to one of my lecturers, you know, I, I thought I was fully formed at 21. <laughs> I'm like, you know, this full person and I'm a mother and I'm an artist and, you know, I'm a student and rah, rah. I don't know how it fits into who I am. And she smacked me, literally, <laughs> up the back of the head, wow. which I think I needed. <laughs> and was like, you're an Indigenous woman. It does not matter what you make. Everything that you touch is your perspective. And it doesn't matter whether you grew up on a mission or on country or with people who can share that cultural knowledge. Everything that you are making is your perspective as an Indigenous person. And that was really kind of a light bulb moment for me that I was like, I can actually make these things in any way that I want. They don't have to fit into a box, yeah. which usually made up week is please do dot work for me. And I hate that. <laughs> um, so this is really cool being able to not just do this because this is something that I love doing, but to share it with everyone during this time and show everyone that it's not just dot work and I don't just do things like that. I mean, it can be superheroes. It can be Kobe as Astro Boy. It's fine. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I have, you know, been um, reading a little bit up about you and um, my boss, Steph Kelly, who's unable to be here and she sends her apologies, but um, big fan, big yeah, fan. I'm a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I understand from conversations with Steph that um, you you work really closely with community um, in, in your artworks and I'm we're really interested to know what are the ways that you engage with your community and involve other artists in your artistic practice and this specific collection of works. Um, I guess because I didn't grow up on country and within my community and I've always lived in Sydney, I connect in a kind of non-conventional way. So <laughs> the way that I connect with my Indigenous community is online. And I have a wonderful group of friends that are all black artists that create things like this and much, much nicer. <laughs> and they're all phenomenally talented and doing things that are just so outside the box. And I love being in that space. And, you know, we feed each other. And I believe one of them, I can't remember which one, one of the artworks in here. Oh, no, it's not in here. 
I did a challenge with all of them that one of them had decided to bring up to create our own superhero. And they all are really into like playing games online, which I'm not. And I didn't, I wanted to do one, but I didn't know what to do. So I turned Rose into um, like a hockey Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle kind of street fighter character. And it was so much fun. Yeah. And it was like, everyone reacted really well to it online and everyone else's artworks were so beautiful. And like, we could have made a book just with all the things that we all made. And so I guess that is the best way that I connect with my community. What was the rest of the question? <laughs> I totally did. Um, I mean, we can explore it a bit more. But I, I think that gives us a little window into some of your process. Yeah. Don't give it all away. <laughs> um, so how about we turn to look at the works and um, as we speak and, and tell us a little bit more, more about and, you, and choose, choose any image that you want to talk about and maybe um, tell us who is this character and... Oh. And who, and who who are they representing here? Who are you representing here? Anyone at random? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Huh>? Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah. Well, this is pretty much like the first five days, and I'd never seen this show before. So Rose provided me all the intel to create that artwork. But this one, a lot of people would recognise and it actually did really, really well online, is Daria. And um, this one was so much fun to make. Like the idea of that opening scene where she's sitting on her bed and she's reading the Six Sad World newspaper, but getting to remix it in this really cool way. And I shared it with the Curry Mail, who then reshared it online as well, which was really cool. And yeah, I love all of them. My favourite is Demon Slayer, but I think it's the last one, so we won't see it for a while. Well, um, some audience participation when you see the Demon Slayer. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Shout it out. Yeah? Okay, good. <laughs> um, what role do you think art plays in promoting understanding and reconciliation between different cultures and communities? I guess. For me specifically, it's just about sharing this part of myself and what I'm so proud of it for. And it also is really nice to be able to show these things with my children, who then just, like my kids see this as like a normal thing, like we should always be proud. And there's been like a few things on at school where Rose has said, you know, I feel a bit like I'm showing off. And I'm like, show off. Why not? Like, yeah, Why not? get up there, get out there, show everyone what this is so cool for and what makes you proud about this and everything you love about it and yeah, she kind of, sh alright, <laughs> no, <she went. laughs> Okay, so for the aspiring artists in the room, what advice can you give to someone who's just starting out on their journey? I feel like this is like specifically for when I'm friends in the front row. <laughs> um, usually the first thing that I say when someone asks like how to get here is buy the iPad. But I know you all already have one. <laughs> um, I use Procreate to create all of these artworks. Um, Procreate is sort of a watered down version of Photoshop, but it doesn't have quite as many features. But it's so intuitive and you can create so much. And I think it's $20. And that's it. Okay. There's no subscription. You can download brushes online. You can create your own brushes. You can do courses. There is a million things you can do. And it's Australian based out of Tassie, which is even cooler. <laughs> so I'm a huge, huge fan of the program. I think when I sit down to talk to my daughter about the things that she wants to make, she's very much my way inclined, <laughs> um, it's just about showing it in a different way and not copying things that you see online word for word or piece by piece, but reimagining it and putting everything together to create something new and beautiful and just show bits of yourself. I mean, the best artworks are things that, like if I can get you all to cry when you look at my work, <laughs> I've done what I wanted to do. <laughs> and maybe not for these, because these are a bit different. But that's sort of the goal, like, I want people to look at my work and feel something, whether it's, you know, happiness or pride or strength. I, I want them to feel something when they look at my work. 
And so if you can get people to do that, regardless of how quote unquote talented you think you are, you will be doing the job. Yeah, you. <laughs> Fantastic. Pearls of wisdom. Um, so interesting. I feel like we can probably talk for a lot longer, but I'm mindful that there might be some burning questions in the room or some comments uh, as you've been kind of listening to this conversation and maybe looking at the works. Um, some of you may have seen the works many times, but maybe seeing things with new eyes tonight. Um, and maybe you're seeing the works for the very first time. Um, does anyone have a question or a comment? It's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Okay. I am a absolute glutton for detail and texture <laughs> and the bigger the pieces, not so much in these because these were made quite small. This is actually the biggest I've ever seen them. Uh -huh. um, but in larger pieces, I will hide things everywhere. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. <laughs> and I love the idea that you can look at it and straight away know what the story is, mm -hmm. but then you look at it again and you see something else. Yeah. And it may not change what the narrative is when you're looking at the work, mm -hmm. but it, it just gives you little glimpses of things. And I love hiding stuff in there. I actually learned that from one of my really good friends, Charlotte Allingham, who's a phenomenal mm -hmm. artist. She had a very small print, and when she had zoomed all the way in, she had actually put um, a traditional story of symbolism in the eye reflections of the man that she had drawn. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm obsessed. Mm. So there's a lot of that. There's a lot of those things that I kind of drop in there. And yeah, I just really like detail. I like to punish myself, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, so the biggest piece that I've ever created was a billboard, and it was for Breast Cancer New Zealand, and um, it was, was also it a Breast Cancer New Zealand. Okay, what year? Well, it was in New Zealand, so you wouldn't have what seen year? it anyway. Uh, like, 2020, maybe? Okay. Maybe somewhere around there. Um, yeah, I actually created an ad for them, and they animated my work, which was the first time I'd seen my work animated, which again was very cool. And um, yeah, I never got to see the billboard, unfortunately, but I did get lots of pictures from people. Um, that was very simple though, as far as like this kind of level of detail and more. Yeah. I yeah. guess the biggest commission I've done was, <coughs> it was about two meters, two okay. by like 1.5, something like that. It was, <laughs> it was for a surfboard of all things. <laughs> um, but it was so cool, it was, Basically, he had found me, and they that company works between Australia and New Zealand, so he wanted something that reflected both sides, and obviously my husband is Māori, so being able to reflect both halves of my family was a really, really cool thing. That piece was so big that I put so many hidden nuggets <laughs> into it. There's like a little kiwi in there, there's a little tui in there, like, Adi wanted a little him in there. <laughs> But yeah, so that's probably my two biggest actual Because the one from New Zealand was that uh, an ad for them or it was already an issue? It was an ad to um, promote people going and getting mammograms at that time of year. So it was during Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which I think is in October. So, so did they own it? How does it work in the real world for you? Is that your copyright trademark or one Stella, yeah. can I suggest maybe afterwards okay. we can have a little conversation because we're getting a little bit off track. <laughs> no but what I really love about this you know, you. insights is that we're hearing about how much you innovate <laughs> and and you know looking at different canvases and different opportunities is really exciting. So I think keep an eye out for this young artist. <laughs> Um, I do see a little hand in the corner, so I'm just going to reach over. I guess a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B again. Um, yeah, they, they are meant to feel like a set, but it's not super cohesive, because obviously they're completely different stories and things like that. Some of them are scenes, like this one is a scene from uh, the Black Widow movie, mm. and so if you know the movie and you know the scene, you can kind of put it together, but if you don't, then you sort of have those questions, it's like, what's going on, what is that here? Which is great, I love that I've done that. 
But yeah, I, some of them are um, like very in that particular moment, like that is definitely one of them. And others are more just like the character in a kind of random background. So yeah, it's a bit of both. Okay, we've got room for one more question. Um, <laughs> not sure if I've had this conversation with you because that was oddly on point <laughs> but I have actually written a book <laughs> um, it's in the process of being illustrated at the moment I am incredibly happy with the wording so much so that the uh, illustrations are really difficult because I want them to have the same power that the words do and um, it's essentially like what's the best description I guess it's like a, a, a love letter, a letter of gratitude to my dad because I grew up with my dad and my grandparents and I wasn't around my Aboriginal family at all. And yet, without knowing anything about where I'm from and the things that as an older person I have learned and make me so happy and proud, he still managed to raise me to be incredibly proud of who I am and where I'm from. And yeah, so the book is basically about that. It is a children's book, but I'm having arguments with my publisher at the moment <laughs> because he wants it to be simpler, and I said no. <laughs> so it'll be something that you can share with your children, something you can sit down and read together. And um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really, really happy with it. It's beautiful, and I think it will probably be the best thing that I've ever made when I eventually finish it. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks, Mel. Um, what a great conversation. I know we could probably go for a lot longer, but um, what I'd like to just um, introduce also is that in the book theme, <laughs> is that there's limited edition zines and um, that Mel has brought here tonight. And um, I believe... Um, there are images in these productions that have not been compiled before. So if you're interested, um, you've got a little zine for $5 or the bigger version, $30. And I'll hand over to Mel to explain. <laughs> What's a zine? A zine. Um, it's kind of long and complicated, but essentially, historically, a zine was... Um, it's, it's like a small artist book, and it's meant to be made incredibly small and quick, and originally they were made by people photocopying and pushing out these tiny little artist books. Um, so I made a little zine, which I actually made this week, and I haven't posted it anywhere, so no one has ever seen it before, so you guys are the first ones. And the book is every artwork from Indigitoba, plus there's also one artwork in there that I hadn't posted for Indigitoba, so it's a full collection of all of these artworks. And this isn't actually all of them, there are some that were missing because there was too many. So all of them are in the Indigitoba book as well. Fantastic. Um, please put your hands together to thank them. <laughs> Thank you all for coming out on this rainy night um, and coming in. But I'll hand over to you all now. Um, there's plenty of food and drinks remaining. Um, and have a chat amongst yourselves and enjoy this beautiful exhibition, which will be on in the learning space in the Digital Gallery for the next um, month, I believe. So you can keep coming back and keep spread the word. Um, tell people about this really extraordinary work and this amazing artist. Thank you, Mel.